3,315 pounds, big giant Rockwood High Wall Premier Model 277 with a slide out, a bathroom, air conditioner, outside kitchen, and a partridge in a pear tree here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. These are a true example of what I like to call a fold down travel trailer because this is more than just a pop up camper. It has all of the things like we've got like i said bike rack we've got a max air fan and air conditioner bathroom it has anything and everything all wrapped up into 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound sack and i'll tell you what's really impressive are the very modern updates and decor features that they've included here in this in a uh, a camper class that has always been very traditional and and just frankly not flashy they have really churched this thing up. <laughs> so we've got a huge like horseshoe of a U dinette over here and this thing slides out. This is a big pop up with a slide. Gives us that extra seating space for more people. This can fold down into an extra sleeper to give us up to six people in capacity if need be. And there's full storage under it, which is pretty darn cool as well. They give you easy interior access via these bench end doors here, but there's also a door on the outside to be able to get to some of that back storage as well. You notice how this is completely carpetless. There's no heat registers in the floor. That makes this exceptionally pet friendly and uh, you know very good for just keeping clean easily. Now over here, this is one of those things that is far more like a travel trailer and far less like a pop-up camper, and that's the kitchen area. You have a really generous amount of prep space on here. You can have stuff spread out all over the place, and if there's something I've learned in my career, people have never traded in campers for the following two reasons. Neither A, I have too much counter space, or B, I can't keep the cabinets full. I know that more counter space and more storage are never the wrong answers on anything. I like all the switches are right here by the door, easy to get to, like your awning lighting and stuff. And you have a very expandable entertainment arrangement right here. This is a Bluetooth stereo, but it also has a, a, a link for your phone. It even has a built-in microphone. You can place hands-free calls through your camper. That's, it seems silly, but I don't know. Maybe it's handy. Maybe it's cool. But it also has face-mounted HDMI and USB powering plugs. So it's very like Chromecast and Roku stick friendly, if you're into that kind of thing. And that's part of where the Wi-Fi Ranger comes in. We'll talk a little bit more about that outside, but basically, this camper makes it easier to hook up to mobile data sources. Now you've got a full stove and oven. Again, a travel trailer feature in a pop-up camper. It's one of the reasons I refer to these things as mutants, because there's some weird hybrid in between. And great drawer space, which is another thing pop-ups don't usually get a lot of. A double bowl sink with uh, split fitted covers, so you can use that as extra prep space if need be. And removing that faucet real quick, it just unscrews and pops off real fast and easy. That's the only thing you really need to do to fold this camper down other than obviously pulling the beds. Now, I guess that also depends. Like right now, we've got the bathroom closet thing set up. So yeah, obviously you're gonna wanna put that down as well. <clears throat> Another travel trailer thing in a pop-up camper is the full 13,500 BTU air conditioner. But what's pretty cool, even though this thing doesn't have a really big overhead clearance, Part of the reason that you're going with something like this, as compared to a Rockwood Geo Pro or Mini Light, is probably because it tows smaller. So they gave it a low profile air conditioner. So it's full power and it's small. Uh, the little flip down hanger job right here is a little clothes hanger that you can pop down if need be. And you notice that we have both an air conditioner and the big Max Air vent fan right here. We've got that thing just screaming away right now because when you first burn off the furnace, it does not smell good. And that is yet another of those things that we do for you here at Halo RV that a lot of owners are probably not aware of. A full-on microwave as opposed to just a, uh, uh, you know, just a stove burner that can go inside or outside. This actually has an outside grill that comes with it as well. Um, <clears throat> I just don't think we've actually opened that up and been able to check that quite yet. Uh, we've got our full furnace over here, which is more than enough for the cubic foot of space that we're looking at. A 70 by 80 king front bed, 60 by 80 residential queen rear bed, and they are both heated mattresses with their handy little hand controllers if you want to take some of the spring and fall chill out of the air. Now, your front and rear beds come with the handy bunk light fans, and it really helps to just promote airflow. And you think about it, there's no roof above this thing. It's just a, I don't know, a glorified tarp, if you will. 
That's putting it pretty bluntly and non-sexily, but that's kind of the case of things. The point I'm making here is you can't really run electricity in it, so these bunk light fans are an awesome, very effective workaround to that. Now you've got the handy little cargo hammock right here on the front and rear beds. It's just those Rockwood doing Rockwood extra things that they put together. Now if you don't want it gaping down quite that much, these are adjustable. You can, you can see that's all it really takes to uh, you know, add, remove slack to it. But there's also, if I flip this up, you can see that you have a handy little cargo pocket in the front. Very nice for putting your little phones and stuff up there. Now this is a bathroom model. It's a combination shower, toilet, wet bath. So it's kind of something where you can do the three S's all at the same time. <laughs> and there is a curtain that actually comes inside a shower track here. So there is not going to be any visual gaps when you take it home. Spinning us around, we've kind of looked at the dinette from the other direction. We'll take a quick peek at it here before we move on along. You can see how this has a bigger gas electric fridge than a conventional pop-up camper. Um, oh shoot, I never remember the number on this. I want to say like 3.7 cubic feet. I, it might be more. I can't remember. So we can always pull out the owner's manual and double check that for you. But something you're not seeing overtly, at least until you get closer, you've got TV hookups over here. So if you want to turn this into an entertainment center, you definitely, definitely can. Chances are, I think the majority of people getting anything in the way of a folding camper like this their primary concern is not entertainment. I think most of the time you're going to want to spend your time out here. But if it's a rainy day, you do have the spot. To, I mean, you know, it's got park cable hookup and all that good stuff. I also like the little detail of having power outlets next to each bed. So that if you, uh, let's say, you know, you're camping, but you still need to run a, a CPAP machine. Blam, there you go. And this entry cabinet right here. Again, I never had somebody trade in a camper because of too much counter space or too much cabinet space. Now, uh, here's an example of how these one-piece entry doors have a screen door function to them. I cracked this down a couple notches, and you can feel air billowing in this. In fact, here, hold on, what do I have in my pocket? <laughs> here we go. I'm literally going to throw money at this thing. These things are no joke, ladies and gentlemen, and pardon me if I don't leave $40 laying behind in the camper for the next person to buy it, although I don't think anyone would ever complain about it. You know, like when you find your coat from last year and there's 40 bucks in the pocket, you're like, yes, going to dinner tonight. Now, just like the inside, there's, there's a lot to cover out here. That's kind of one of the things about this being such a, uh, a, a large pop-up camper is that it has more features than a normal pop-up normally includes. Like, for instance, it's got a bag style awning, as is traditional on a folding tent camper, but you notice how it's got a full travel trailer LED light strip in the middle. This, that's one of those mutant qualities where it has a little bit of A and a little bit of B. Now up top you can see the base mounts just popping up over the horizon there on the Pro Rack bike mount system. So uh, those are just generic things if, well, you could use it for a bike rack or you could use it for kayak mounts or any number of things. That's a, uh, a base system with a lot of interchangeable parts so you can really kind of build your own adventure there. Now, to the right of that, you can see a little white square box sticking up. That's the Wi-Fi Ranger. Long story short, this camper's basically got a glorified modem built into it for greater reliability to mobile data sources. Now, our we call it canvas material here, but this is actually something called Duratech. It's got a five-year warranty on it against manufacturing defect. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic product. It's pretty common in the pop-up business, so I'm not really aware of any brands that aren't using it at this stage. So I don't want to you know, spend too much time talking about it. But long story short, what's neat about it is it is sectionalized. And what I mean by that is, let's say something damages this chunk right here. No sweat. You can replace just one piece of it. You don't have to replace the whole shebang. Notice we've got a full one-piece entry door. Now what's cool is there's actually sliding panels in that because you can see the screen on this side. So if you want to use that as a screen door, you can. Now there's obviously a, you know, the, the traveling door and that's really what kind of becomes the steps down here. And this is a neat little variant on the very popular Moride step system right here. I think these are really more important here on this small camper as compared to the big heavy things because a small trailer like this is more inclined to wiggle and jiggle as you walk in and out of the trailer. So having the steps support your weight on the ground keeps this camper a lot sturdier and more stable. And hey, why not a big extra large entry door for coming and going? Why I like the one piece door though is the handle is in a more organic location. 
if this had a normal camper travel door with the handle down here, getting in and out, getting in the camper is fine, but getting out of the camper, the handle's at like my shin level. Now when I'm walking out of the trailer, it's at waist level. It makes more sense that way. All of our lights, whether it's inside, outside, upside down, are LED. Pardon the little shop post as we're walking around here. We've got some pretty inclement weather outside. And I really didn't want to open a, uh, a, a, you know, a tent camper of any variety out in snowy weather conditions and then close it up because if I were you, I wouldn't want to buy that camper. And I respect you folks enough to not do something like that when your money's on the line. It's part of the reason we put these videos together is to give you a little better level of education here. This is still a seven foot wide box though, which is nice. So it's easy to see around. And one of the major benefits of these is the towability of this as compared to a fully enclosed hard-sided travel trailer. Because it has all the features, and frankly, it's the budget of a full travel trailer because it has all the same equipment. But when you're towing, it folds down. It's kind of the same concept as those old high lows for those who are familiar with it. Those were just, uh, you know, one step closer to being a fully hard-sided product. It was a hard side clamshell type camper in a way. Never mind all that, that's not what this is about. Now, real quick note for you guys. Um, these are just shop test tanks. While we pulled it into the shop, um, Mr. Norm, one of our quality control specialists here at Halo RV, was kind enough to let me nose around in his neck of the woods. And these are just his shop test tanks and battery. Now, any new RV that you purchase here at Halo RV includes new tanks that are filled and a battery. So you'll have tanks and a battery. It just won't be these ugly old things. Another thing to note up here is that we have a very travel trailer style double propane tank with an auto changeover regulator. Not a conventional pop-up single propane bottle that can bleed dry and then you're kind of without propane until you swap it out. We also have a power lift on this. And not only is that important due to the size of the camper, but guys, that air conditioner up top is heavy. And letting the old Mr. Power Winch do the job for you, that's fine by me every day of the week. Now this is uh, solar prepped. If you got a little portable panel, find a spot, pop the camper in the shade if possible. Then you can kind of move the panel around and chase the, pan chase the sun all day, as it were. Neat little thing up here, since this is a bigger camper as compared to something like a more basic Rockwood 1940 you'd also find here at Halid RV, you'll get more full features. Again, like a full travel trailer in a folding fashion. Like a full outside utility shower. We even got our park cable hookups over here. Now the... Um, this door right here I want to point out, because this goes under one of those dinette benches. Now right now there's stuff under it, like this is actually the uh, curtain for that shower enclosure that we saw already inside. But uh, just to give you an idea of kind of how that stuff ships, and then obviously we quality control and check all that before you take it home. That's what we're doing now. This camper's not sold. I hope it is sold soon, for, <laughs> you know, obvious reasons, but... Uh, when something comes in here at Halid RV, it first goes through a surface inspection, and then every camper, whether you see it in a video or not, goes through this same process. We pull it in, uh, we plug it in, hook it up, run everything through a full appliance burn so that we can be proactive, not reactive, about pr uh, quality customer service and, and uh, quality control of our products. Um, the uh, cool thing is, too, we do that again before you take it home, but we're not a fee-based dealership. We don't charge extra for what dealers, this process would be called like prep or readiness fees. That's all part of the price tag with us here at Halid RV, like the battery, the propane tank, everything this camper needs or you would need to operate. There's Mr. Norm checking her out right now. Um, that's all part of the price tag here. You know, we don't zing you after the fact. I can't handle taxes and tags because I can't control what Mr. Governor does for the state or your state as it were, but we do everything we reasonably can. Um, the uh, LED taillights, I mentioned the LED lighting earlier. One of the cool things about that, it's safer. It, uh, it flashes five milliseconds faster. And what that means at 60 mile an hour, if you calculate distance traveled over five milliseconds going 60 mile an hour, that means the person behind you has up to five feet of additional stopping time, simply because those are LEDs and not incandescents. But Rockwood went the extra step and made those LEDs as well, the markers and everything. Just all the little touches too, like the spare tire cover is like a hard shell cover. It's not just a, a little slip sleeve. And I mean, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with a slip sleeve. It's going to get worn out over time from weather, from wind buffeting, from whatever. But that ABS shell is really not. At worst, it might get a little discolored from the sun 10 years from now, but it's not just going to fall apart because the wind blew on it too much. This is one of the things I thought was really cool about this. Outside kitchens are super popular in the RV business, and I've always felt that a pop-up camper would be one of the best places for them. But very few pop-up campers have the physical space to allow for a, uh, an outside kitchen. 
Well, Rockwood figured out how to do it here in their high wall models. And considering they're the number, Rockwood's actually number one in two categories. Did you know that? They're number one ultralight laminated RV and number one folding camper on the market. That's terribly impressive. They're number one in two vastly different ways. Um, the uh, cool thing here, it's a telescoping outside kitchen. It has a galvanized rolled steel countertop. What that means, guys, is that it's, it's got a weather treatment on it. So uh, God forbid it gets wet rainy, misty, or you splash some water around, spill some Kool-Aid, spill a barley pop, whatever the case may be, no big deal. It's just not going to hurt it. And they came up with a sort of pseudo drawer cabinet thing arrangement down here. It's weird, but it works. And that is a real sink with a real drain, by the way. And that is connected to the water heater as well. Uh, short of that, I think we pretty much got her nailed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is actually not, I'm looking at it. A lot of times in big campers, people like to talk about all the windows in them. That's one of the neat things on the pop-up. You've got a 360 degree panoramic view potential on one of these things. I don't know of a single fifth wheel that can offer you something like that. So again, we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do all the rest, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything between. We do it all for you here. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thanks, Norm.